Nothing's more important to me than the security of my country and the security of my family. Protect your home and your family with America's most trusted home security system. Protect America, now just $19.99 a month, gives you and your family the peace of mind they deserve. Protect America and protect your family today. I guess my question is how many times do we have to prove that these people are blowing up people now, never mind if they get a nuclear weapon, when do we send them an airmail message to Tehran? <laughs> That old, uh, that old Beach Boy song, Bomberan. <laughs> bom, 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 bom. <laughs> anyway. <laughs>In May of earlier this year, Senator John McCain, Republican of Arizona, went on a secret trip to Syria to meet with rebel leaders of the Free Syrian Army, fighting in the opposition to Bashar al-Assad's Syrian government. Once McCain returned home, photos surfaced of his trip claiming that he had met with known terrorists, members of the rebel group Northern Storm Brigade, some say an adjunct of the Free Syrian Army itself, and responsible for kidnapping 11 Lebanese Shiite pilgrims in Syria. Lebanon's Al Jadid TV station, which is viewed as sympathetic to Hezbollah, a Shiite militant group fighting for Assad in Syria, broke the original story. Nine of the 11 Shia kidnapped are still being held, but one of the released captives identified Mohammed Noor, chief spokesman and photographer, and Amar al Dadiki as part of the Northern Storm's leadership, and again as the two men standing beside John McCain in this picture. The story made headlines in the United States, and tough questions awaited. Senator McCain, you, you were recently in Syria, and as a result of that trip, there were several reports that uh, claimed that you had a photograph taken with a notorious kidnapper named Mohammed Noor. Your spokesman says if that was the case, it was regrettable, but Senator Rand Paul picked up on that and essentially said, if you don't know who you're having your photo taken with, how do you know who you're giving weapons to? Well, I know, I know who I met with, and I, in fact, I met with a group of Syrians uh, uh, yesterday. Obviously, the question wasn't answered. So on Friday of last week, September 6, Christopher Green and I went to Prescott, Arizona for a town hall event and followed up with the senator from Arizona. I've been in Syria. Have you been in Syria? No. I have not. No, you have not. I have it's not. also clear that the American people overwhelmingly do not support a war in Syria. Question. A research poll said 91% of Americans Sir, do not support it. Your statement was false, so I don't have any response to a false statement. Senator McCain, uh, what, what do you say about your judgment on how to pick the good and evil in Syria when you yourself were photographed? How do we trust your judgment, picking the good and the evil in Syria? with someone because it appeared in an Al-Qaeda newspaper in Lebanon. You obviously know what I'm talking about. How are we supposed to trust your judgment if you're photographed with known terrorists? I don't, I, I have never had anything to do with known terrorists and I'm offended by your question. Senator, some people believe that there The allegation came from an Al-Qaeda newspaper in Lebanon. While al Jadid TV might be known as sympathetic, the story was also contributed to by the Daily Star, a Lebanese newspaper who was from 2000 to 2009 a representative of the New York Times in the Gulf region, hardly an Al-Qaeda affiliate. But more importantly, Al-Qaeda was founded by one-time CIA asset Osama bin Laden, Sunni Muslim of Saudi Arabia. Al-Qaeda is a radical Sunni Muslim movement and still heavily funded and trained by the Sunni Gulf states and Saudi Arabia to this day. McCain obviously confuses the two. Now whether it was intentional, using Al-Qaeda as an umbrella term, which many unfortunately do in America for all terrorist organizations including Hezbollah, or a flippant reminder McCain has no idea what he's talking about is unclear. Nonetheless, he has conflated the two, Sunni Wahhabists and Shia militants, as if they are one and the same, they are not and are in fact in bloody opposition in the war over Syria. What McCain is doing is tantamount to confusing Protestants and Catholics in 17th century religious wars of Europe. This either speaks volumes of his ignorance or indifference to the fact that Al-Qaeda and its affiliates in Syria are doing most of the fighting, are strategically aligned with Assad's enemies, including the West, and stand the most benefit from a U.S.-led strike against Assad's asset, not the Free Syrian Army, whom John McCain met with clandestinely just a few months ago. The Daily Star thankfully cleared the air on one name, Amar al-Dadiki, or Abu Ibrahim, the former leader of the Northern Storm Brigade. 
was actually wounded and allegedly died in Turkey months before the photo was taken. And Muaz Mustafa, executive director of the Syrian Emergency Task Force, an American nonprofit that helped organize the McCain trip, said nobody self-identified as Noor and none of the guys who were standing outside were in the meeting with John McCain. The only problem is while Abu Ibrahim, the old leader of Northern Storm, was missing and presumed dead as the Daily Star reported, its new leader, Samir Alawan, whose organization still holds the nine Shia Muslims, was in the meeting with Senator McCain. And as far as Mohammed Noor and his lack of self-identification are concerned, it's hard to envision a scenario in which he would be toting around his I am a known terrorist badge. This is, of course, not the first time John McCain has been caught literally palling around with terrorists, as the Daily Show's host, John Stewart, put it comically. For years, as Global Research notes, McCain has advocated, as he is in Syria, for groups either directly affiliated with or tacitly connected to Al-Qaeda franchises, and arguably in blatant violation of international law as well as in breach of U.S. terrorism legislation. In April of 2011, on a visit to Benghazi, Libya, John McCain claimed that the brave fighters he met there were not Al-Qaeda. To the contrary, they were Libyan patriots who wanted to liberate their nation. In an NPR interview that same month, McCain said, they are my heroes. AFP reported not a year later after Gaddafi was overthrown and Libya was in shambles that Senator McCain and Lindsey Graham met with Abdel Hakim Belhaj, one of the rebellion's leading figures and then head of the Tripoli Military Council. Bel Hajj, prior to and during the revolution in Libya, led the now defunct Libyan Islamic Fighting Group, a confirmed affiliate of Al-Qaeda and responsible for the deaths of U.S. military personnel in Iraq during the U.S. occupation, according to an authoritative 2007 U.S. Military Academy report. LIFG is a terrorist organization on both the U.N. Security Council and the U.S. State Department list. And as Tony Cartolucci points out, McCain was not only rhetorically supporting listed terrorists, but calling for material support, including weapons, funds, training, and air support in direct violation of USC subparagraph 2339A and B, providing material support or resources to designated foreign terrorist organizations. Now, this material support McCain had sought for Libyan rebels, most of whom were from Benghazi, a hotbed of Islamic militancy, of which claim the lives of three Americans and a U.S. ambassador a little over a year after John McCain gushed about his newfound friends. In the end, claiming ignorance is no excuse, but it is a clear example of the prevailing wisdom or lack thereof in Washington, and why American foreign policy is in perpetual failure. But John McCain's trip also reveals the larger, more interested powers behind the effort to oust the regime of Bashar al-Assad. The NGOs involved in Libya and Syria are just the tip of the iceberg. More in our next video.